Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time for another overlooked but awesome card. This time around, this card is undeniably awesome. It is so, so stupidly powerful, but in addition, it was so completely overlooked. This was very recently legal, and it just drives me completely up the wall that nobody appreciated this card. I found this in a grand total of zero other players' decks, and this was at my old local gaming store where there was like 40 or 50 players. There is just no excuse for this card not being widely used. It is one of the absolute most powerful cards in white for two mana. There are certain cards where you just throw them out and they just ruin the game. I mean, they just bring everything to a standstill. Now, normally what you're thinking is, okay, if it's a creature, you must be talking about Death Touch because that just prevents anybody from swinging. They could have five giant creatures and they know they're going to lose one, so maybe they think twice about swinging. Okay, maybe three would be a little bit more realistic. Five, they'd probably just swing and lose one. If you start boosting this card and putting counters on it, it is game ending. This card can receive triggers from other cards. It can be enchanted. It can cause triggers. It can single-handedly win you the game. I guarantee you, as soon as I throw this one up, though, you guys are going to be like, what? What's that? What does that do? What are you talking about? It's not even a rare. The all-powerful creature from M15 that I'm talking about is Wall of Essence. It's a 0-4 defender for two, so, you know, already a reasonable wall. And whenever Wall of Essence is dealt combat damage, you gain that much life. So a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh, that's kind of nice, you know, whatever. Maybe it's a one and done block and dead. Uh, you gain a little bit of life, whatever, nothing special. Clearly people do not understand the implications of this card. If they have two creatures and they're both three threes, they swing. Nothing happens. You take three damage, block the other one with the wall, gain three life because the wall took three damage, nothing happened. Your life total didn't, well, I mean, it did move, but effectively a net even result. Now, even in M15, especially the sets right after it, there was a whole bunch of cards that said every time you gain life, when you gain life, uh, if you gain life, or something like that. So life gain triggers were really hot back then. So not only is this single-handedly one of the most powerful cards that you can throw out to stop people from attacking, it could potentially feed into the rest of your deck with like Sun Bond and a Johnny's Pride Maid, both of which get just huge when you gain life. So let's say the enemy has a 10-10 creature without trample. Well, is he really going to swing and give you 10 life? Okay, so now the wall dies. Uh, you're up 10. They swing again, get you back down to your life total that you were at before, then swing again. It takes three attacks on three different turns to undo the damage of you having one wall of essence out. The only downside that I ran into personally was if you give it protection from blah, pick a color, it doesn't actually take the damage in the first place. But if you grant it indestructible, it does take the damage, it just doesn't die. Better yet, give it a plus three, plus three bonus for a second, or, you know, put an aura on it, give it a bonus permanently. If this thing's toughness starts getting up into the seven or eight range, the game's over. I mean, the funny thing is, maybe it turns into a complete lightning rod, which is a card where people just will remove it with a removal spell. It's a two-cost wall. You're not even swinging with it. That's an appropriate lightning rod. If they have to burn a kill spell on this just to get it off the field so that they can resume attacking your other threats are going to be much bigger, especially in white. There are definitely bigger, badder creatures in white. Let's say you've got a double striker on the field and a flying lifelinker. Well, forget those. They got to blow up your, you know, four, eight wall of essence. The sheer absurd power of this card is undeniable. Now here's what's even weirder. The first time this was printed was Stronghold, which is super old. I mean, we are talking ancient. I think it was like 1998 or something when that came out. Now, it's no secret that Wizards accidentally printed some OP as crap cards back in the day, like in the first couple years of MTG, so I would consider this one of them. And then you fast forward the clock, we hadn't seen it until M15 comes out, with the exception of, of course, Tempest Remastered. Yeah, everybody remembers that one. It's an MTG Online only one, and nobody gives a crap about it. I mean, I freaking love Tempest as a block, but MTGO I could care less. Honestly, sets like that, the online only sets, total money grab. Absolute money grab. 
Anyway, out of nowhere, they decide to reprint this card, and that is just so weird because it's pretty uncommon to see stretches like that. I mean, Birds of Paradise, it's a good, solid staple card. They printed it 15 times, you know, steadily over the years. There's a couple cards that have been printed like five times, but it's not very common for them to take something from the 90s and then reprint it in, I mean, what was that, 2015, 2014, something like that? So that came out of nowhere, and it should have been a sign that, hey, this card's a total antique. It's probably really powerful. Honestly, life gain wasn't that big back then. Even with Sunbond and Johnny's Pride made, it just wasn't a huge deck. Except for the one that I built that absolutely could not lose. That was one of the most powerful decks I've ever built. Uh, I might have referenced it in the past, its name was Just Scoop already. Now that's an appropriate name for a life gain deck. This deck just about could not be beaten. The only reason it performed miserably at Friday Night Magic is because, no joke, one-third to about half of all the games played would go to the time limit for the first game in the round. One night I had three ties, so I guess it could be said the deck couldn't win. I mean, it had Wall of Essence, it had, uh, it didn't have Dazzling Reflection yet, but this is obviously a more powerful version of that. Uh, but it had Sunbon, it had a Johnny's, um, it had every life land, literally like 21 life lands, except for the Radiant Fountains, which were double life lands. That was a mean deck, so life gain right now is pathetic. The Felidar Sovereign deck I put together was a complete disaster. And the funny thing is the one thing it needs is a card like this. If they were to reprint Wall of Essence and Aether Revolt, that would be it. Felidar Sovereign, Aether Blast all day. Which is, of course, see, the 50 bomber, the Aether uh, Reservoir or whatever. Anyway, needless to say, there's a foil version of this in my commander deck, and you should probably put it in yours too, especially for multiplayer. If you have any kind of ambush, boost, just counters, anything, you name it, you probably need a Wall of Essence. Even completely by itself, this creature is insane. Unfortunately, like I said, not in standard at the moment. Kind of missed out on that, so I almost felt bad making this video if you've never heard of the card. But if you want a powerful wall, ho ho, it's bonus overlook but awesome time. Wall of Resurgence. Why don't people play this card? It costs three, which is eh, reasonable in a 22-23 plus land deck. It has defender, so what? It's zero six, so you know zero six for three. Okay, it's a wall. Got it. You know, no reach, no flying, whatever. Oh wait, when it enters the battlefield, you may put three one one counters on target land you control. If you do, that land becomes a zero zero elemental creature with haste. That's still a land. No, not until end of turn. Forever. So you can tap your little 3-3 for uh, mana anytime you want, or you can just start stomping over to the enemy and killing them. There is a risk that they could blow up on your lands, but honestly, losing a generic vanilla 3-3 creature that also generates mana, not really the end of the world when you only paid 3 and also got a 0-6 wall out of it. I think that's why people shy away from that card. But just think about this card. You get 9 total toughness, and you get 3 total attack power on the field for 3 mana. Now, if it was literally a 3-9 creature for 3, people would be losing their minds, but there's nothing stopping you from double blocking. So technically, splitting it in two is actually better because now the attack section of it is modular. You can detach it from the wall, attack separately, and still have the wall. So mathematically, it is a 3-9, but it's better than a 3-9. I do not understand why people aren't playing Wall of Resurgence in anything. Maybe they just like Awaken so much and this is the crappy version of Awaken that doesn't have haste? I don't know, I can't figure it out. Clearly, racism against walls. Or it's like structurism. Or like creature subtypism. So that's your double OBA for the day, and I will see you guys next video.